Guys, welcome back to an another interesting topic. So today's topic is about direct memory access. So before going to the topic, uh, if you have any doubts in the previous topics, you can comment down below. I will answer within 24 hours and that's guaranteed. Try it and don't forget to subscribe. So without any delay, let's go into the direct memory access. So what's a direct memory access? It is a mechanism where the hardware device is moving the data from its memory whatever the data which has its in it memory is moving to the main memory without the involvement of CPU so the CPU is not involved in this data transfer that's direct memory access so what happens when the CPU was there so here as you can see over here so as you can see over here with the CPU as in charge the device, let us say the device is pen drive. The pen drive sends the data to the I.O. interface. I.O. interface will store its internal buffers. Then what happens on the request of CPU, it will send the data and the CPU will store it in its internal registers. So the CPU will write or read the data from the memory to the internal registers or to the memory okay so this is the process which will happen when cpu is in charge so what's happening we are getting a delay first from io to cpu and cpu to memory so what's the simpler process all we can go is from io to memory that will be a simple process so how can this be achieved this can be achieved by using dma so let's go into dma so as you can see, this is our normal process. What we are trying to do is to remove this CPU from our game. So what will you do is we will add a DMA in between. So this is a DMA in between between IO and memory. So let's discuss in deep about DMA. So DMA just reduces the time and also reduces the effort of CPU in data transfer. You know CPU is so complex and it can do perform many many complex operations other than data transfers. So we require CPU for that complex task rather than moving the data from here to there. So we need big brain to do big tasks okay. So now here DMA is also a separate processor understand. DMA is also a separate processor which will do this data transfer. This DMA is only used for transfer. So DMA is a controller which will control the data transfer. So guys this is how a DMA and CPU and device controller and memory are connected to a bus. So this is the CPU, this is a DMA, -C, DMA controller which is a processor which will allow the transfers between the IO and the memory. So this is an IO controller, okay. This is our device which will give the data from the external world okay so now let's go into the operations what happens the first thing is that you as you can see over here DMA contains some registers which need to be updated or configured before the start so what are these registers let's go into it so DMA has three registers mainly sort of consists of three registers address count and control signals registers so address register as you have imagined it's used for addressing from where the data need to be started or from the day data need to be read or write it so count will say how much data needs to, the amount of the data need to be read or write and control signals will per say which operations need to be performed either it should be uh, read or write so let's go into the process the first thing happens is that first thing we need to configure this registers so cpu will send a what configure signals the amount of the data which need to be filled in this address count and control signals it will set the whole thing registers for dmac so next step is that the CPU, the CPU have device drivers. So CPU will send the signals to whom? To our device controller. So what happens is that what sends it that it sends the data, 
this is the first step okay i'll write it for a better understanding so this is the second step so cpu will request the io devices to get the data from this device so it will and ask go and ask the device to give me the data and the device gives the data to io so we need something to store so we have a fifo or a buffer so fifo or a buffer are storage elements okay we can have a fifo or a buffer so it is nothing but a temporary storage elements fifo and buffer are temporary storage elements okay which will store the data and we can take the data from them later so this is the second step okay understand it first registers are set it will request the io controller it is the io device the device controller to ask for the data from the device and it will take from take it and store it in the internal registers internal storage elements okay so then after what happens is that this one dmac now it comes into the picture it will send a request that you need to send your data to memory now what happens is that this uh, device controller will send the data to memory so after the data has been transferred it will send an acknowledgement back to dmac and what does dmac do now so it will check the byte count how many words have been transferred how many word count or byte count so it will decrement the count so the count is decremented in this case so count is equal to count minus one so it is decremented up to what it will check whether the count is zero or not so dmac checks whether the count is zero or not if count is zero then the data transfer is done if count is not zero again the process repeats the request will come from cpu again and it will transfer the data so it will transfer the data third and it will acknowledge it back so these steps keep on continuing until the data is completed so as you know cpu is required cpu is required most of the people say that cpu is not required for dma cpu is required to write the control registers okay don't forget and set up the modes which needs to start the operation so cpu is required up to a certain extent okay and dmac does the remaining stuff of transferring data so both processors this processor is complex this processor just transfers the data so i hope you understood how a dma works uh, let me show you one more figure so this is what happens uh, completely after the count is zero what happens is that dma sends an interrupt signal to cpu don't forget i forgot this one dma sends an interrupt signal to cpu indicating that data transfer has been done so it is shutting off and the bus it will be given back to cpu so if it is not completed it will keep on repeating this cycle if it is completed it will go interrupt the cpu and the cpu will take the bus from dmac so dma controller interrupt cpu when the operation is done so i hope you understand what are the picture why a dmac is used i will recap it within two uh, two minutes if you have time just see this summary you will get everything so before we need to go from cpu to memory now dma has made a shortcut for us to transfer the data from io to device the cpu path is cut so dma is used to reduce the functionality of cpu so that cpu can perform the complex tasks don't forget cpu has a bigger brain it needs to function on complex operations rather than on data transfers this is the most important thing okay then after we have the connections so here are the connections what happened the bus is connected to these four components what will happen at the first the control registers are set address count and control signals this are set then after cpu will request the disk controller to take the data from the driver or our device and it will take the device and store it in our buffer or a fifo if you want about a fifo go and check my fifo videos okay then after uh, this dmac will re request it okay request is not there so it will request the uh, data to be sent to the memory and the memory will acknowledge it back and it will acknowledge it back so whenever the acknowledgement comes then it will reduce the count and if it checks it's zero then it will 
interrupt back so this is a dma if you have any doubts please comment down below i will answer within 24 hours that is guaranteed and if you like this video please do subscribe it will help me a lot to produce more good content for you thanks for watching